Good afternoon and welcome to Pinhole Quilting. I'm Liz Holpin, my husband Pete is behind the camera and we are back. We missed you, did you miss us? Yeah, we've been quite busy, we've been quite busy. We were away um, and then when we came back it was just one thing after another and they all happened on Fridays. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say hello to not only our existing customers, but a lot of the new customers. And that's because at Duxford Show, we had a very busy show and we got lots of lovely new customers um, that hopefully we'll see on Facebook Live. And if you are on board, whilst it's all live, then please do say hi, say hello, where you're from, etc., and then we can respond to you. And if you've got any questions, and we're doing this live now at three o'clock on a Friday, which is when we aim to do it, but the proviso always is that if we've got a show, if we've got teaching, or if otherwise unengaged in other things, as happened last Friday, then um, unfortunately we can't always do it. But we do try whenever we can to keep you up to date with what's new in the long arm quilting world of pinhole quilting and handy quilter, and also to give you some tips and techniques on long arm quilting, which is what this is all about. It's about answering your questions, and things that have come up during the week possibly, um, and we think, oh, that would be quite good to focus on that on our Facebook Live. So, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a, a lovely week and that you have a weekend of quilting perhaps planned. Uh, we're still in that bit of the spring, I suppose the start of spring, when um, the weather's pretty awful. And it's actually a really nice thing to sit inside and do some quilting, piecing, whatever takes your fancy. Okay, Pete, if we... Yeah, let's say, say hello to a few people then. Great. Elizabeth Dunkley. Elizabeth, it was lovely to see you. One of our long-standing customers. Yeah. Quick on the uptake today, closely so, followed by one of our new customers, Pauline brilliant. Droy Moore. Oh, right. Oh, fantastic. Who we hello. met at Duxford, I think. Yes, we did. We did. Pauline Droy Moore. Yes, and um, very quick after Duxford, very quickly after Duxford, Pauline took delivery of her machine and is up and running. Um, very, very quick. So congratulations, Pauline, and I hope you enjoy your new machine. Um, and hello to Elizabeth that we also saw uh, at Duxford. It was really busy. It was a really busy day um, on the Friday, um, but on Saturday and Sunday we were equally busy, but we had Carolyn, uh, one of our Amara customers from Suffolk area, who came and helped us, which was um, a huge bonus because we actually got, I think we got lunch on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always possible. Anyway, so, um, um, good show. so we've also got Graham. Hi, Graham. Hi, Graham. Val Brooks. Val Brooks. Some very impressive work that we've seen from Val online, I we think. We have. Val, I'm so glad that your mate Carolyn probably persuaded you to post those pictures and we were delighted to be able to see what huge progress you've made. Um, some beautiful work going on. I mean, we're, we're always impressed, aren't we, by you know, the, the kind of continual learning of our customers. Uh, but we only know about it if you post it online. So thank you very much, Val. And I hope it encourages others among you to do the same. I know that sometimes when you're just starting out, it can be a little off-putting to see some um, exceedingly good work, but those customers were where you are now. That's the thing to remember. Nobody started like that, all right? And they're only <clears throat> potentially a few years ahead of you. So it's, uh, it's a question of, of, quite often it's about application, but also about interest. You know, not all of us, and we'll talk about this in a bit, not everybody wants to do whole cloth quilts and very dense quilting. There's something for everybody even in, within the, the more specific area of long arm quilting. Anybody else, Pete? Yes, so Hilary Lavette. Hi, Hilary. Oh, hello. Also, Claire Newell. Hi, Liz. Oh. I'm dancing. I finished a quilt today. Yay! So, Claire, you may have seen, we did post a video of Claire dancing. She came over from oh. Ireland uh, for one of our courses recently and was very excited with what she was doing yeah. on her moxie here. Absolutely. And, and it was fantastic because Claire did a brilliant, brilliant, as, as a lot of our other customers have done, but Claire does a happy dance when she succeeds with something. Um, and she came over with her lovely friend, Rebe uh, Rachel, no. Oh, Rebecca. Gosh. Rebecca, I need to begin with R, right? With R. Um, Rebecca, who, they're like a double act, and um, posted a lovely video, and it was absolutely brilliant to see both of them at the showroom at the same time because you get double the amount of energy and um, I'm so delighted that we're going to be working on our little routine 
Professor of Quilts Care. Yeah. So I'm going to say hello to a few more people because it's such a long time since we've actually it been is. online live. So Joan Arnold. Hi, Joan. I hope you're getting on well with your new Amara. Yeah. I haven't posted the pictures from your installation yet, Joan. No. I, I will do that this afternoon. Yeah. And Joan's just got some emails from me because unfortunately because of things happened ah, this week. Okay. I, I, they were a bit delayed. I do apologize, Joan. It's, um, it's been a bit of a it's been a tricky week for me. And Pearl, hi Pearl, you very oh. rarely you miss, miss one of our events, Pearl, don't you? Yeah. And, Di and Pearl was at our training, of course. Pearl was at our training. Di Bell, hi Di. Hi Di. She says, nice to see us back. Yes. Yay. Nice yeah, to be back, nice to finally. Back yeah. Although coming back from holiday, we've both had colds. We so have. It's, it's we, been... we prefer the warm weather, has to be said. <laughs> yeah. We did go somewhere warm and uh, Pete had a cold before we left for three weeks. Uh, we went on holiday and we were fine while we were away. We came back and both of us got colds. I had two in close succession. So, you know, we're, Pete's still recovering. I'm nearly, I'm nearly over mine as well. So Rachel Dowsing in Ipswich. Yes. Carol Watson. Carol, you've been in the States, I think, haven't you? So Ra Rachel's, um, uh, knows Carolyn as well. Yes. And who else was it? Carol Watson. Oh, Carol was over at QuiltCon. I think she was. And then I think, Carol, you were doing Florida or I can't remember. You were doing something over, I think it was Florida. Anyway, Carol, it's great to see that you're back, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing you and catching up at Festival of Quilts. Of right, a few more. Louise Cox. Hi, Louise. Yes, Louise. Julia, Brilliant. Julia Crosswaite. Oh, yes, who was at our training and has now moved on to um, you know, having a stand up. Um, as well, and is doing some great She's work. She's got her Pro Stitcher Pro light Stitcher on her Simply 16. Yes, we've it's got... It's not something that we have promoted sufficiently, actually, because there are lots of no. Simply 16 owners out there, and uh, we haven't really promoted the fact that you can put your Simply 16 with a light. Pro Stitcher light. Yeah if you have the little foot frame or the loft frame. That's right. So, which is a great option. And I think it is something we should really probably talk a bit more about on another session, because the <clears> thing <throat> about Pro Stitcher is that you can do custom quilting of your individual blocks on a little foot frame, moving it around and using the Pro Stitcher light. You do need to convert the tracks. Um, there's a conversion kit that comes with it. So that's not a problem. But it's really something that only, um, I think actually, the, the people who've had Pro Stitcher Light on the loft frame are the ones who had read about it from the States. And it's not something we've really um, talked about so much. So if anybody's got a Simply 16 and is on a loft, uh, sorry, on a little foot frame, which is the smaller frame that you can quilt whatever size you want, um, it's a really good option for you. And I, we can explain why in a little bit more detail. I'm going to make a note to do an future <clears throat> Facebook Live. And so. final couple, Annette. Annette, Brown Cow Road. Brown Cow Road. <laughs> and Trudy Wenman is near Ipswich as well. Yes, we've got a lot of customers in and around Ipswich we now. Do. Actually. We do, Actually, yes. And uh, finally, last yeah. but not least, good morning from Iowa, says Shelley Hayden. Yeah. It says, what's that? Shelley is oh, her Shelley. name. Yeah, okay, hi, hello, Iowa. Iowa. That's Hello, what we Iowa. Was, we, when we see Iowa, we always think of the caucus, don't we? But we won't talk about politics. Okay, moving on. So Duxford was a really busy show, and we had Carolyn. Our next show will be at the Malvern Quilts UK. It's a competitive quilt show. So if you um, are going to Malvern Quilts show, check out the quilts. There'll be some lovely quilts. I'm quite sure there'll be quite a few done by our handy quilter owners. Good luck to everybody who's entered that show. Um, Last year was, was a very busy year for Linda Jackson, I believe, wasn't it, Pete? Do you remember the, the, Linda couldn't actually hold all the cups from last year. So um, it's just, you know, one of those things. One of the ordeals you have to go through when you, when you make so many beautiful quilts and win so many awards. Congratulations, Linda, um, at last year's Malvern. I hope um, that everybody has, um, you know, good luck with their quilts this year. So Morgan Quilt Show, we'll be doing demonstrations. We'll take along some glide thread, but if there's anything you need that you'd like us to bring along to the show specifically, definitely let us know in advance. Uh, we pack up everything on the Wednesday. So let us know before the Wednesday. We are gonna do some live demonstrations, which is great, but also I wanna talk about a machine that isn't in yet, um, that will be coming in very shortly. And I'm hoping that we'll have for more of them. We might have it for more of them, mightn't we? We might take it to Morgan, I suppose. We might take it. It's the it's part of the Amara family, 
They call it the Amara family now. And the Amara family consists of the Amara 20, so that's been around for a while. Um, but the Amara 24, uh, which was previously called the Forte, it's now um, called the Amara 24. And we'll be getting our Amara 24 in next month. So if you'd like to come to the showroom or if you uh, like a demonstration of our machines, you will see it on the showroom floor. And there will be another one coming soon after that, which is the sit down version. Um, but we haven't got that yet. One of the things that came up at Duxford, and it was really quite a bit of useful feedback for me, was something that we're going to demonstrate today, which is that not everybody wants to do those you know, beautifully detailed whole cloth quilts. And we certainly teach, you know, have taught in the past, and Linda's done a great job, and Talen as well. And obviously, there's online classes that you can take on whole cloth quilting, where you know, we use two layers, and, and it's all about the thread. A lot of people make beautiful quilts. They want to make pieced quilts. They love the fabric. They love choosing the fabric or getting the pre-packed selections uh, based on a range of fabrics. And it's not necessarily about the quilting per se. It's more about getting that quilt finished in a beautiful way that you've done yourself that complements the design of the quilt. And we can achieve that in a number of different ways with our long arm machines that you certainly would struggle to do under a domestic needle. In that respect, we can do quilting from the front. We can do really work from the front. We can pounce stencils on the front as well. From the back, we can do pantographs, which is where you trace a design that's on the back table and it replicates on the front. You use a laser light on the back and that's what you use to trace the design. We can also use groovy boards, what's called a groovy board. Um, that's where we've got a stylus that fits on a groovy groove. You can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Um, the other thing, of course, is, is the ProStitcher, the computerized software. And that enables us to use ProStitcher Premium, which is Handy Quilter's computerized system, and ProStitcher Lite. And the training on that is, you know, we do a lot of in, um, Zoom training on the ProStitcher Premium. Um, and there's a lot of videos. And most of the functions that are on ProStitcher Premium are on post that you like, not all of them, um, which is why there's a difference in the pricing. So, you know, as an example, uh, let me just put this down here. Uh, when Stuart Hillard came to the showroom last year, um, he very kindly left us a lovely quilt. So, you know, what we're talking about is something that's a lovely, beautiful, beautiful quilt like this. And it's quilted in an all over edge to edge design and I can see from that he's quilted it all in uh, white thread and so you choose your fabric for the backing to make it easy for yourself. Now this could have been achieved with a pantograph as well as what he used which is the Pro Stitcher Premium. Edge to edge you get lots of movement, you choose a design that fills the wadding nicely, you know, something like this, which has got, it's almost like a, a sort of feather around a circle, which I think you can see here, this sort of thing. And it's, you know, it's lovely because without the quilting, you know how it is, you take a quilt off a frame and it's been transformed from this flimsy quilt top to something substantial and lovely that you'll want to snuggle under on a cold day or a cold day in March in that case. And it's that transformation that, you know, people want to achieve. And it is difficult when you've got the mountain of, of wadding, particularly for a big quilt that you might have. So when we're doing that kind of quilting, you need even spacing. And you can achieve that with a number of different ways. Like I said, you can do full line stencils, which are the pounce on the front, or you can pick your easy to do quilting designs that we would quilt from the front, making sure your placement is even throughout the quilt. You might do that by having like a, a golden threads template effectively that sort of places what you're going to do and then you can just pounce through that. Or you could use a chalk marker and say, right, I'm gonna put a star there, Pete, I might need to move, you to move the camera. And I just evenly work out where I'm going to have whatever my motif is spread at even intervals. All right. So this is a panda pencil that Liz is using here, yeah. by the way, just to mark yeah. it. You could use stickers, easy to peel off little stickers, little green dots or something would work just as well. So you don't have to have 
a panda pencil, if it's not black, <laughs> and you say, well, I can't see it, um, it's not a problem, you just use a sticker, and as you get close to the sticker, you just take it off. The other thing that you can do to get an even placement is imagine this is my row. I might mark, put some little reference marks in, and I create something meandering, and I could just do big feathers, something like that, to quilt it really quickly. These gaps will fill in, and so I create a nice fitted in design. And this tells me where I've got to go up to. Oops, that actually needs to be there, really. Can I just say we are honoured to be joined today live by Kelly Klein. Woo! Fun to catch you live, she Yay! says. Oh, that's amazing. Gosh, didn't, the world has made a smaller place and a lovelier place for having friends come online. That is so lovely. I saw some beautiful photos, actually, of your 10-year-old. Uh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And if you uh, don't follow Kelly Klein on Facebook and other social media, then you really should. You really should. So Kelly Klein and um, Kelly does a lot of vintage quilting. Um, Kelly, if you want to put um, a link to your Facebook page on the comments, please do so because you produce so many um, really useful tips for many of our handy quilter owners. Let's and just hope, yeah. explain who Kelly is for those people who, yeah. who weren't lucky enough to see her when she came over. Yeah, so, so Kelly came over with Kimmy Bruner, another excellent quilter, um, and both are fabulous teachers. They came to our first Long Arm Quilting Academy down in Bristol um, in 2018, and we had a fantastic time learning from them both. Uh, there was much fun and laughter um, and poor Carl, Claire, Kelly's husband, was sadly um, not very well during that uh, trip. So regards to Carl as well, I hope he's really well. Um, but the thing about that was is that we learned a lot of techniques and what um, Kelly brought to it also was um, some really important things that we've, we've never forgotten. I mean, Pete quite often uh, quotes this one, but it's a favorite for me, is that uh, comparison is the thief of joy. And uh, Pete often recounts this, the, 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 the talk that Kelly did at the beginning and what an impact it had. Um, and it's all about, you know, embracing your creativity and finding that joy. So uh, we hope that uh, Kelly can come back at some point in the future. We would love to have you back over here. You know that. Absolutely. It's a shame about COVID, isn't it? It's kind of put all these things on, on hold for so long. But anyway, Facebook gets us around that to some extent. So Di Bell says that she learned loads from Kelly. Yeah, so Di was on that academy and it was a bit of a step yes. change from, from what I saw of Di's progress. Di has had a Sweet 16 for quite a few years and had attended previous training as well. But it's those being immersed and meeting other like-minded souls that kind of gets you going to another level and it's absolutely brilliant and we just love the work that, that Di has done since then. So. And, and as Kelly points out, we were a little ahead of the game in terms of mask wearing, weren't we? <laughs> yes. There was, there was quite a funny scenario where, because poor Carl had got this um, virus and he was, well, the whole of his table, the whole of the one of the tables had these serviettes from the table used as face masks. Um, Pre-COVID, um, I should say, when nobody was wearing or even entertained the prospect of wearing face masks. And it was uh, made a very funny photo. So thanks for making us laugh, Kelly. It was brilliant. And that's the point, isn't it? We always learn so much more when we're laughing, as proved to be the point with the two ladies from Ireland that just made us laugh the whole time. So let's go back to this uh, quilting. The, the nice thing about having these marks is that we can maintain consistency. It's also worth taking some photographs because once this is up on the take-up rail, you may change your design in some respect. You may have forgotten that you'd always gone clockwise, always gone anti-clockwise. And when I've not taken a photo at the top, I've forgotten that I've made some adjustment part way down. So I've got a moxie on here. It's got about just over a 10 inch throat space. So it gives me plenty of space in which to do my designs. Um, and on the eight foot loft frame, I can quilt up to about 76 inches wide. I don't normally have a second machine on here, but this is just to show you that we can put the Simply 16 on the loft frame as well. And that also means that we can automate it with Pro Light, as we said earlier. So should we do some demos, Pete? I'm yeah. gonna do practicing first. I'm gonna just mention practice, practice, practice. 
because um, these are the notebooks. They're the lovely moleskin uh, notebooks. <clears throat> and I've used these since um, I went to the first classes with Kimi Bruner. In fact, I've got Kimi Bruner, the 31st of the 10th, 2013. There you go. That was my first attempt at feathers. You can see it's not very good. Um, but, you know, practice, that literally was the next one. And we just keep going and practicing. Feather as a filler and how Kelly showed us how we could fill in triangles. So I know these are more complex, but I went on and did a Jamie Wallen class after that and some of his DVDs. And these can be scaled up. This wouldn't be done at this scale for on my quilts, but this is the kind of thing that you would do. A motif, perhaps with a little something like this, like a little hook, and then here's our heart. And that way, if I go down here, into my heart, into I always do it into the point and then out. I think it's worth mentioning that um, all of these really good um, handy course for ambassadors and other top quilting teachers, they all say how important it is to draw your designs first yeah. because it does get it into the muscle memory. And I know some people are reluctant to do that, but it makes a huge difference. It really does. In fact, on any of the quilting classes that I've been to with like so Kimmy and Jamie Wallen and various others, we sit down at the table first. It's what we do as well on our classes too. Um, and in fact, this is, a, this is a class in this book. Angela Walters is coming over for Festival of Quilts. And I've got some, I've got some little quotes from um, Angela that many of you all know Angela from her um, the quilting is my therapy. She did the midnight quilter and there's a lot of YouTube videos and you can follow along to learn some quilting, either fillers or she's done one on rulers, some fantastic. So this is some quotes from Angela. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. Angela. So, um, yeah, stitching in the ditch is like waxing your eyebrows. No one really knows it's been done, but your face looks a whole lot better. So. That was some, um, you know, real wisdom, real wisdom there from, uh, from Angela. And some of the things that Angela's very good at is these swirls. So sort of filling in this sort of thing, filling in, and now, you know, scale that up if you want to get a quilt quilted quickly or filling in areas or this kind of thing where you do these beautiful up and down swirls and <laughs> These are all just me practicing. Oh, look, fail. <laughs> you see, I, just, I struggled to do ribbon candy, um, which is quite interesting. So this is all the sort of me practicing. Some are really quite rubbish, um, but I'm not gonna say. And this is my favorite, look, you see this? Angela Walters drew that. Heart you, Angela. So yes, question about this. Angela is definitely coming over for Festival of Quilts, which is at the NEC from the 3rd to the 6th of August this year. <coughs> so she is the keynote speaker and is doing yep. talks on two days. Friday and Sunday. Friday and Sunday. Tickets are now available to yep. book for that. There are lots of tickets available. And we're doing Handy Quilt Classroom again. Uh, it's primarily directed at those people who've never done, done Long Army before and would like to know more. Um, our typical customers be the ones that maybe have come to a show, had a little play, or even just looked at it and walked away and just didn't feel brave enough to have a go. But in a classroom scenario where you've got one machine per person, um, then you're going to feel a lot braver and you're going to want to come along and do some classes with us. And that's what they're there for. Okay, the more, the more advanced classes are much harder to do somewhere like festival. We just don't have enough time to bring all the resources we need that we have access to when we're at our showroom. So, you know, just um, come along if you're thinking about getting a long arm um, and come to festival, of course. So to answer your question directly, Louise, Angela is planning to be there in person this year. Absolutely. Yes, it won't be virtual. IRL. Okay. And Sal is saying, is Academy still a possibility for the future? It is, it is. Yeah. We were only talking about it again this we were, week, Sally. I know we've been talking about it a lot. I know. But, but we're going to make it happen this time. We are. We are. In the meantime, I'm going to start quilting.
I can take this ruler base off. I don't really want it on. So the ruler base, oh, <clears throat> if I can get it off. The ruler base is great for doing rulers, but I don't want. I want to be able to get all the way to the front of this. Rachel, you're in the Alps again. Is there any snow? I wonder, <gasps> or is it all about the apres ski? Oh, okay. Key thing here: make sure that you can reach all the way. So yes, a couple of people saying they've got their tickets for Angela already. There are still several hundred available. Um, in terms of those people who are interested in coming on our classes aimed at people who are seriously considering a long arm, some of those classes have already sold out. So don't hold back. They're available on the um, Academy and Workshops booking page for Festival of Quilts. So have a look. There are still places available, but they have sold quite yeah. quickly this week already. They have. Um, I think your key word is long arm. Right, key error, fail, fail. What have you See done? What happened? I reached the edge of my throat space, so I'm going to need to amend this. I can't do this on this pass. Look, I hit, I hit the edge. Yeah. So you've now moved the quilt on. Yep. And I'm going to come in here and do this bit because I couldn't do. I can't do that bit. So it's too far. So a couple of things to note here. Doesn't matter if you miss the line, that's a guide. Just like with a pantograph. I think it's fairly clear to see this, you know. You can pretend <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. But you can also see how quick it is with the six regulator built in, how quick it is to do an all over design on your quilt. Got a bit of movement here. I didn't tighten my quilt up. Like I wouldn't keep doing that, obviously. I'd have made sure that I could actually reach it. Okay. Yeah, it's a good idea actually, particularly if you're new to your machine, you can mark the end of the throat space before you start. So that Absolutely. You... So the way to do that, there's a few different ways that you can do that. Just thinking out loud. Oh, well, my scissors in that. You've got your panda. Oh, I've got them. You did have some earlier. Don't know what you've done with them. They look yeah. like those. Yeah. So if you want to mark your throat space, what you might want to do is just at the beginning of the line that you're going to do, just mark how far you can go. All right. And in this direction as well. And you don't have to do it with a short line. What you can do is when you stabilize your quilt and you're coming down here, all right, and you, you've just moved on. You're going to stabilize the edges. So you can come down your throat space, do a smaller, a bigger stitch, something like a four. But when you get to here, what you can do is just do, go along, go back like that, and then up, or so I'm really at the maximum here. Just do like a holding stitch. People who don't like wasting thread are probably horrified by this, but it is absolutely fine. And then you've just marked it with thread that you can easily pull out in one go at the end, etc. And then you can go down this side. There we go. So I've got a visual line and at the end, I'll just snip that off. Right, so I'm going to go back up to 11 SBI, and I'm just going to do this other big feather, big feather that you would do as possibly like an all over design, just would fill nicely. The other one that Pete, I think you were suggesting demoing is that one of Angela's. One of Angela's, yeah, you can do that on a big scale and actually complete the design on your quilt really quickly. 
You can. And it looks so effective. And if you're looking for sort of inspiration, I mean, one of the books that I, that's something I quite like, I find that um, Leah's got some really good designs in here. And so this is Leah Day, Leah 365 Day. free motion quilting designs. Yeah. There's YouTube videos that back these up as well. So if you're not sure how to stitch them, then you can go and look at her YouTube videos. And it's great because there's so many different and varying designs that might suit something you've got that you've maybe not done before. You might want to do more of a flower, Love this for one. example. Spiky vine, that looks great. Spiky vine does look good, doesn't it? You see, sometimes some really simple designs are so effective for repetition. I'm not sure I could do that. Oh, I love that. That's really nice, swirling petals. Here we, here we go, very reminiscent of that sort of heart shape that I do, which is um, what, I what I just did there. Oh, so this is Angela's little thing. Let me see if I can find it again. It is one where she goes, oh, I dropped my pen. No. Where you go, you start. You're really good at this, actually, Pete, aren't you? Yeah, do you want me just to draw it and then you can. Uh... Oh, go on then. I like that idea. It means you have to take the camera then. Oh. <laughs> okay. I thought I was having a little break for a moment. Not, not just standing there doing nothing, you know. No, I did uh, So I'm going to start over here. So you start with a hook like this. And then essentially you're just doing sort of petal shapes on the outside of that. And you can do a single or you can do a double even. It's a bit like a chrysanthemum. And wherever you finish up at, you can start and go and start another hook somewhere else. I'm on top of the throat of the machine here. But it doesn't matter which direction you go in, you can always start a hook somewhere. And if you look at Angela's video online, she shows a really good way of filling in these gaps and things in the middle here as well. It's actually fairly simple. You just do echoing okay. like this. Echo. And then in no time at all, you can do the whole thing. It's brilliant. Looking really good. There we go. See, he's multi-talented. Just proved it. Right, so I'll stitch this now. Right, <clears throat> can I do the whole thing? No, I've got to move it because look, I've got to move it back, which is fine. So. We're going to talk about doing this kind of thing where you move back and forwards. So I need to move it a bit more. There we go. Tension it. Put your side grips on if you haven't already. And I'm going to start down here where Pete started. So again, just make sure you can do it. Don't want to make that mistake again. Right, so I'm on 11 stitches per inch. I'm in precision, but actually I'm going to change it. So should we just talk about stitch regulation as well? So on the Moxie and on the other machines as well, you've got precision. You stop, the machine stops stitching at that moment in time, whether the needle's in the work, it's up out of the work, partway through it. Um, that's precision. And you set how many stitches per inch. In C, which means continuous or cruise mode, you set not only what the stitches per inch are, but also this box here, we set how many stitches per minute it's going to do when we're idling, while we're stationary. And that smooths out your stitching. So I'm going to select that. So we've now got 11 stitches per inch and 150 stitches per minute for the cruise. So I've brought up my thread and I'm going to do some little tie off stitches, like so. And then I'm going to. So I pause and keep stitching now, like that. I'm going to do what echo, echoing is. 
etc. So it's only a small amount, but I think you can see how quickly you can make that a really effective finish on your quilt. Yep, perfect. So now we'll go on to the last one, um, which is feather, and then I'll just show you how we can sort of do the filler um, if you wish. Is that okay? Happy with that? Okay. Just show you. Oh, by the way, on the Moxie, it's got this, this kind of auto cut off. You can actually use it as pretty much a tie off stitch as well, which is really nice. And the newer Amaras have the same, do the same thing. It's just a little aside, that might have confused some people. Uh, right, so we are gonna do a feather. Feathers. Feathers, we, talk, we teach feathers. Linda teaches brilliantly on the feathers and to learn as well. So we've got some really good people that can teach you feathers. Um, so this one is one, I, I did this on a, a charity quilt where I wanted to do edge to edge, but just with large feathers over a, a very straight line design. So really sort of uh, changing how it looked. Um, so I'm just going to go right, That's one style of feather that you can do where you just do loops. There's no bounce back or anything All right, so that's quite an open feather. I did something like this on a, a log cabin design on my sweet 16 and it was much easier for me to mark in advance um, and just do my whole sort of barn raising. But if you want to do the bounce back. So we're going to bounce. Yeah. I knew I was going to hit the top. I'm just going to make my own thing up here because I've kind of run out of space with it. Great. Right. So edge to edge, front from the front, from the back, quilting from the back. Talking about the quilting from the back, should we talk about the offer, Pete? Yes, we must. I didn't put that on my list. Can you believe that? Because it's in my head. So there's a fabulous quilting from the back or secret draw offer. Our offer for March 2023. So if you are interested in placing an order from a machine, Get it in now. This is really good offer. Um, you get if you place an order for a machine and a frame, you get either to choose a quilting from the back kit or the secret drawer. Now it does depend on which frame because you can't have a secret drawer from the for the loft frame, but you can order the quilting from the back kit. Um, it's a great option to have with the Moxie, and it means that you can do these kind of things with the laser light if you wish. So if you want to get your own quilts quilted by yourself, then that's a great option. And March offered. Talk to us now, because we need to get the orders in uh, next week. All right. Yes, Anything so for the that? Moxie, the value of that offer is a free quilt from the back kit plus the uh, tabletop sections for the back of the frame. Uh, that's worth £590. So you get that for free. Uh, you have to place your order and pay a deposit by the end of this month. Absolutely. But you can take, take delivery after that. Just give us a call. We can talk through. Yeah. Similar offer works. for the other stand-up machines as well. Yes. And if a full price brand new machine is not within your long arm reach, then we have our pre-loved machines. And Pete, do you want to tell us about the latest one? In fact, I've, I've subsequently thought we've got three coming up very soon. Yeah. Okay. Which I, and I think 
some of them will go quite quickly. Yeah. So we've actually had a bit of a run on pre-loved machines, yeah. although they're not all marked off the website yet. I think we're down to just one pre-loved unsold right. at the moment. There are three more coming online soon. Yeah. There is going to be a Simply 16 on a studio frame, which is down in Somerset. Yeah. There is going to be an Avanti, which we have here, which we'll be selling. It's a pre-loved machine coming from somebody who's upgraded, which uh, we'll be having the Avanti with a new studio frame that we will supply. And the third one, very exciting. First one of these, we're going to have an Amara wow. with a studio frame that's a pre-loved machine. Now that's up in Scotland. Yes. So you don't have to be in Scotland to take advantage of that, but I shall be uh, working on that and listing that fairly soon. But get in touch if you're interested in any of those three machines, because yeah. there's only one of each and it's always first come, first there served. Is. And there's another one coming on. It'll be the Simply with mag electromagnetic channel locks. Oh, OK. Yeah. Not sure I know about that one. Yep. All right. You, you will. I'll remind you about it. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so those are going to be listed on our website. But, you know, sometimes I literally somebody hears about it and or perhaps just calls us out, up out of the blue and we say, oh, yeah, we've just got it in. So call us or email us if you're interested in any of those machines or in a fantastic March offer for the Quilting from the Back Kit or the Secret Drawer. People might not know what the secret drawer is, Pete. No. It's on the little foot frame. We should have prepared that. Uh, we don't have that on another one, do we? No. So anyway, it's a massive drawer, either fits under the little foot frame or onto the studio frame. Or the gallery frame. Or the gallery frame. And I say massive, if you've got a studio frame, you can have three of them in each four foot section if you've got a 12 foot frame. So they fit in the four foot section and they are voluminous. They are. They are voluminous. So you will find that you can store all your threads. No, not all your threads, because I know some of you got massive thrill, uh, thread collections. But some of you might be able to put a quarter of your thread collection um, in a drawer. Yes, some people have got a lot of thread. And I don't blame them for it. We've got a lot of thread here. Oh, where's my list? I need my list. I need my list. So talking about classes. Thank you, Sally. Um, we've been working with Carolyn, the lovely Carolyn who helped us at Duxford. Carolyn helped us on our last foundation workshop along with Pauline, both of them are Mara customers, but Carolyn's going to be more involved in the teaching going forward. So she and I are working on some classes. Keep watching this space for more details of those. We will be releasing them ASAP so that you have lots of time to book them and plan your diary for the year accordingly. Um, or the grandchildren, or the dogs, or the cats, who, whatever it is, um, so that you can come and enjoy some long arm quilting with us. It'll be a lot of fun. Carolyn and I, I've just loved working with Carolyn. It's been uh, so much fun to do the foundation workshop, and um, I know that we'll, we'll be working on some nice classes for you. Uh, what else? Yeah, so I've been working on uh, a Pro Stitcher Light quilt. And if you go onto our YouTube channel, you will see whoops, the Pro Stitcher Light custom quilt that I've been working on here. So this is a charity quilt that the local combatant quilters have been doing. And it will go somewhere important at the end of it. So what I've been doing, I broke it down into sections and I'm quilting section by section to show that this is how you can do your quilt. So I stabilized it in the ditch. You could have done the whole thing just with a wiggly line like I did here. Um, just put it through the center of the block. So I'm going to do that next. I've done my star and I've done these and I've done these and I'm just editing on um, my editing program to be able to show you how I did this section here. So watch out for that. I'll be posting it not as a Facebook Live or anything, but as a YouTube and on our Pro Stitcher Lite customer, Pinhole Quilting Pro Stitcher Lite page as well. So for those of you who've got Pro Stitcher Lite, uh, you can look at it on there. But the same principles apply to Pro Stitcher Premium because whatever we did in Pro Stitcher Lite, you'll be able to do in Pro Stitcher Premium. I just wanted to show how much you can do in Pro Stitcher Lite because it is a fantastic program. And, you know, the whole setup for the Moxie with the Pro Stitcher Lite is under 11,000, which I know it's sort of, um, you know, a really considered purchase, but 
it does give you a huge amount of versatility and computerization. So you're not having to hand guide it, which is important for some people um, who perhaps don't have that ability or love doing the computerized side. Talking about um, uh, computerization, and we have some lovely new customers, upgrades to ProStitcher, ProStitcher Lite, etc. But also we've got um, the Fat Quarter Shop in Banbury, who've just had their Infinity and a gallery frame with ProStitcher installed this week. Um, we're excited about that because the Infinity is a fabulous machine and I know that they're going to absolutely love it. So um, you'll, they'll be offering it as a quilting service, won't they? They will, in due course, yes. yes. in due course. They're still learning it at the moment, but they won't take long because they're extremely experienced and very fast learners as well, has to be said. So we're looking forward to uh, getting them all up and running. We'll help them do that. Festival of Quilts, then don't forget to book your workshops. If you are interested in a long arm, come and see us. Even if you're an, exi you know, if you're an existing customer, I hope you come and see us. Wave from the sidelines if you can't get through. It was very busy last year, wasn't it, Pete? I hope it's just as busy this year, and we look forward to seeing you, if so. I was going to talk about the pre-loved over here. We got time? Yeah, we got time. I'm going to take... Uh, but it light? No, we don't need it, do we? So walk this way. That's the, uh, the walk this way. It's a terrible Walking backwards, joke. trying not to trip over it's anything. It's a terrible joke. I used to do that to um, American customers that were coming to visit the hotel I was working at, and I don't think many of them got it. Uh, right, so this is a Sweet 16, and it's for sale. It's a pre-loved. It's with a lovely customer of ours who came down to the classes last week, Anne, and it's 2015. It's 3395, so a considerable discount from a new price, but with all the features of the new existing Sweet 16 machine. It's in a standard table, but you could upgrade for 1250 to the Insight table. And I just wanted to show you it working, and then I'll show you a bit about Bob Intention, because I wanted to touch on that. So this is our last remaining sit-down pre-loved machine currently. We have yeah. sold four in the last 10 days. Yeah. This is the only one left. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So Anne has upgraded to an Amara. This machine has just been serviced by us. Out. You're getting the hang of that uh, design list. I am, I am. Let me just put that bottom back in and then we'll pick that back up again. So the, the Sweet 16 has, um, with this particular model, it's got a table that um, has a nice slippy cover. Let me just get a pair of scissors. So this was some um, work done this morning by Anna who came and purchased <clears throat> the second to last pre-loved sit down that we had available so she took to it like a duck to water look that was her first try on the machine and she's coming to pick it up on monday yeah is this a new bobbin <laughs> yeah it was, isn't it? it's just <clears throat> right so i was going to talk about bob intention so it's quite appropriate to do this i just want to show you on this this is a pre-wound. And, 
This is a pre-wound, and you want to always want to check when you get a pre-wound that it's not either too tight or too spongy, even if it's a pre-wound. The reason being, occasionally, very yes. occasionally. Pauline, what Liz is showing here for adjusting the bobbin tension is exactly the same for all the handy quilter machines. It's the same for the Moxie yep. and every other handy quilter machine. So yes, take note. So what can happen is if, if it's been, it's basically a manufacturing problem, this. It doesn't happen very often, but you can see that's extremely spongy. You would return that to the manufacturer, or if you bought it from us, to us. This is uh, the large bobbin oh, case. Yeah. yeah. This is the, it doesn't happen very often, but I think it's important to know. And this is the bobbin going into the bobbin case. So with the little slot at the top, and then we pull it up through the slot and under that spring. And then we do what's called a drop test. Having checked that the bobbin turns clockwise, can we just show that? Yeah. So if you load the bobbin and then pull the bobbin thread, Look, yes, you can see the bobbin is turning clockwise. That's correct. If it's turning anti-clockwise, you've got it's the bobbin not. in the wrong way around. And when we put the bobbin in the bobbin case, what we do is keep the latch door closed, and then it goes underneath the table. It's underneath this bit here, and it makes a big click. What you do next is using the screen, or if you're on a stand-up machine, you Using would the handlebars. Use the handlebars to needle down, needle up, and bring, oh, a bit too short. and bring up that thread. Now this is an important check at this point. Test to make sure that is pulling up nice and smooth. Okay, because any problems that you've got and it not being smooth, there's no point in stitching. It's not going to stitch away the issue. So you need to be able to test it and make sure that that is stitching properly. Okay, it's a really good test that I yep. always pull that bobbin thread when I'm picking it up. <clears throat> so, just going to loosen that tension. So very nice machine this one we have got the details just posted on our prelovedlongarms.co.uk website if you want to see all the details about this machine here we go nice okay and anybody who came to the foundation workshops last week will remember um, that one of the important things with the newer style bobbins is this backlash spring inside We've got a really nice little video if you on our YouTube channel. If you just Google on our YouTube search for um, backlash spring, you'll find details about that. One thing to note on this: this is a pre, this is not a pre-wound. This is where someone has wound a bobbin through the bobbin winder and got it not going through the tension disc at all. I hope you can see that it's completely spongy. And I've put a link to winding a bobbin on our YouTube channel to how to rectify this by rewinding it. You're never going to get a constant, no. consistent stitch with that sort of bobbin. Look what happens. It just jams it in here. It catches in this. And so you just aren't going to get an even dispersal. There we are. That's the sort of thing we do talk about on the foundation course. So if you've bought a new machine or a pre-loved machine, you will have been invited to come on a foundation yes. course. Please come. Please come. You'll learn lots. Yes. And it's a lovely lunch. We do a lovely buffet lunch with a Persh or Delhi. They come in and bring us some lovely salads and things. And it's just a really nice way to connect also with people who are about the same stage in their long and journey as you. You are not alone when you have a handy quilter. There we go. It's either us or all of those other long armors around the country. And in fact, in the last week, I've had three people who have purchased a machine that are practically next door to somebody else who's got a long arm. And, and one of them, I couldn't believe it. We, she came to the class and I asked her where she was from and she said, Palestine, I said, did I speak to you last week? And she said, no. 
And I, but I had another customer from Palestine, and we're not talking, obviously, Palestine. We're talking about a little village, tiny village with like a handful of houses in it. Which and is where? In Hampshire, I it's think, is it? It's in Hampshire, yes. Um, was it Wiltshire? I can't remember. I think it's Hampshire. Anyway, it's um, what a coincidence. Incredible. I think it was about 150 yards away. That's that close. Yes, I know. So Pauline, world. Pauline, yes, book on the April course. You have to do the booking yourself. Just find the email that we sent you, the welcome email. Yep. That contains all the details as, as to how to book your foundation course for free. Okay. So I think I've done everything. Pre-loved, yep. We're done. An hour, nearly an hour. Fantastic. Have a wonderful weekend. The clocks spring forward this weekend. So you'll probably all want to go out in the garden if it's nice and sunny from now on. But hopefully there'll be some time for some quilting as well. So you're going to lose an hour's sleep on Sunday yeah. unless you go to bed an hour earlier on Saturday night. Okay, Pete. Yeah. So profound, God. that, isn't that is, it? I know, I know. I think we, we've all learned from that. So, um, yeah, it's normally me that says things like that. Okay, so... <laughs> We're looking forward to it because actually it's getting light so early these days. And for those of you in North America that are south of the latitude that we're on, you probably don't realize how important this is, but it's actually incredibly important. Um, I know your clocks change as well, but um, yeah, the little daylight we get in comparison um, throughout the winter is, um, is coming to the a long, after a long while, is coming to an end. Hooray. Have a wonderful weekend and happy quilting.